In this video, we're going to be doing the most LEGO tricks ever in a LEGO video. The current record is held by TD Bricks with a total of 112 tricks in his video, and with the help of some friends, we're going to beat that. So let's get to it. If you want to display your LEGO minifigures, you can do this by making a stand. This stand has colors for every ninja, and if you want to build it faster, you can actually do that by leaving hollow spaces in it. It's a great way to display your minifigures, but you might have noticed there's something missing. Ryan, the most amazing dragon ever. You can make this by using an A-piece, putting it over a big flat tile, and then putting it onto the main build. Perfect. If you're a Ninjago fan, you probably have a ton of extra katanas. So to store it, get two antennas and some tread pieces, and place all your katanas. This can be used for training in the monastery, and can be useful for Kai to hold a sword. Speaking of Kai, you can make an anvil using these pieces, and use a clip to hold the katana. And along with that, you can make a water bucket that actually holds swords, using these three pieces and put it in like this. If you want to make a custom Climber Kai minifigure, you can do this by using a Dragon's Rising hood, a rebooted mask, and an Empress armor piece. The reason I use the Empress's armor is because I can put the mech thing in the back. If you don't have a Dragon's Rising climbing hook, you can actually make a more accurate one using this, which can actually latch onto things. But if you want to make a more accurate Dragon's Rising hook with glowing powers, you can use one of these transparent pieces with color inside them that look like real elemental powers, or you could Put as many chains as possible on your little hook and try to hang it from anywhere. This one is six chains and one market's tall. Serpentine have a special power that no one knows about. You can actually put swords in their mouth as well as their neck. So Asphira could carry about seven swords. Kai better get running. I'll give you one second to find out what's wrong with this picture. It's been one second. I use pasta to decorate the hammer. Since pasta fit perfectly, another thing you could use pasta for is like a sword holder or something. Do the ninja play sports? Yeah, they do. They play Dragon Ball basketball. So to make this, I use a rod, a clip, and a tire piece since a Dragon Ball fits in it. And if you want to hold your Dragon Balls, you can use this technique with a flower piece where an energy core fits on perfectly or put three on it. This is also a great way for Wu to hold his tea stuff. Back to basketball. You can make some cool plays by using sausages and fangs as motion blur pieces. And if you want to do some cool motion blur tricks while fighting, you can actually use the pieces from Crystallite, the Sword of Fire, and the Skies of Quakes to make it look like the katana is moving. But where are you going to put their masks when playing? You can actually use this ball piece which fits perfectly to put their masks on, and you can use an apple piece to hold two masks at once. If you want to make the Empress's Sword from Lloyd's Dream, you can actually use this crystallized piece along with a sword piece. And if you want to make more accurate Ninjago claws, get the Lego Shuriken Sprue, cut off the other side, and put it on your Wolf Mask Warrior. If you don't have a Lego Master Chicken, you can just build one like this, and you can customize your Shuriken to make it look better with tape. If you want to make a black scarf, you could take a cape piece with holes in it and then put it on the minifigure. And you could probably do this with paper too. If you think a Lego backpack can't hold anything, you could put one of Aaron's pies in there and put it on. That's it. You could use the Jaga minifigures to hold lollipops, which is actually a really good weapon. But before we keep going, we have a special guest to show you some tricks. What's up, guys? JWX Bricks here, and I'm going to show you three light alternate Jago hacks that will uh, change your life. All right, so for number one, you can make the ninja spinjitsu look ten times better by adding this bent piece and then throwing that bad boy into the butt of the spinjitsu. And then by throwing two studs into the base of that spinjitsu piece, you can connect the ninja and make the spinjitsu attack look so much better. For my second hack, I'm using that same bent piece and connecting it to a small mech using this technique piece and then connecting that technique piece to part of a building so you can make it look as if it's climbing. For my final Final hack, you grab this piece, and whilst people usually use it for minifigures holding things like power pieces, you can also use it for posing minifigures, and they look awesome. Y'all, subscribe to Kalido, like, right now. I'm, I'm not even kidding. Shout out to JWX Bricks, his content is just awesome. But moving on, we have another secret trick that you can do with Wolf Warrior Swords. If you press the edge of it, you can hit someone. Just put your finger on this edge, and you can hit anyone you want. If you want to build one of the lava ties of Dragon's Rising Season 1, you can use these pieces and then put tape over that piece and then take like a pen or paint or marker and then color in the eyes and mouth. Aside from lollipops, minifigures can also hold wires. So you can put them on your wires and customize your wires. It's really cool. Many people tell me to use the Vengstone Warrior hands and put them on Sora to give her powers, but I think it's better to use Mamatis instead. His hands actually make it look like Sora's powers are glowing, and I think it looks so much cooler. But to make her Sora minifigure even better, you can actually go ahead and make this. This actually happens to be Sora's mag all condensed into this little back thingy. But to make this, I used two layers of Play-Doh and two layers of paper, with a stud at the middle to connect to a back attachment. Since this month is Cinder Appreciation Month, we have to make him a ton of stuff. Starting off with the Shatter Spin technique. 
Cinder looks like an absolute menace using that power. So to make a shatter spit, I got a bunch of ball joints and put a bunch of red and black around it, giving me this. But to make it better, I actually decided to use a different armor piece instead. Currently, he is wearing a Lego bird's nest, but instead you can make him use this rock armor from Ultraviolet and a red plate in the back to hold up the shatter spit. However, if you have more ball joints, you can show him powering up with an even bigger shatter spin. And the funny part is it kind of spins like a spin jitsu. I also made a melee attack shatter spin that Cinder could use. The new Sora minifigure does not have colored in cat ears. So to fix this, I got some post-it notes, colored it pink, cut it out, and put it on her ears. I think it came out pretty good. There are two tricks you can do with the young dragon Ryu Lego set. First, you can actually turn its wings so it's towards the side. And the second thing you can do is open the little shell in the back and put whatever you want. Another trick you can do to show Cinder smoke powers are using these action stand pieces to make it look like smoke. And then you can actually go ahead and add these red parts on it to add smoke and a shatter spin to make a mix of smoke and shatter spin. Lastly, you can use cotton balls to make his smoke effects look even better. Zade thinks he's hitting Cinder, but Cinder's behind him and just smoked Zade. Another way to make your sword minifigure better would be to paint or permanent marker a mask dark blue and also create a color for her, which I did using Play-Doh. Now Jay loves model cars and model trains, so you can build him a model car using this skate piece and then putting a little light on it to make it look like a car. And then to build a train, you can actually use this feather as smoke and use the same trick with the skates to make a train. If you want to hang your minifigures on the wall, you could do so by getting a base plate and using this Lego piece and put on your minifigures. But if you don't have that Lego piece, instead you can actually use these plates. And after that, you can get a rope piece and done, hanging minifigures. A cool trick that you can use to help your local Ninjago City fisherman is take a katana piece and then put two chains filled with fishies on it. It's an easy your way for them to carry fishies and it's a cool trick that you should know. If you didn't like our way to hold Ninjago katanas earlier, well you're in luck. You can actually use a ladder piece to hold more katanas and other weapons too that can just hang from this and actually hang pretty nicely. Anything could be accommodated for with this new system. For trick number 50 in the end of set 1, you can actually pull off the legs of a minifigure and then put on this piece and then you can make it look like they're meditating and doing whatnot. And so now we're officially done with set 1 of 50 tricks. And set 2 will start right after Brick Kenobi shows you some tricks. LEGO Ninjago never really uses capes on any of their minifigures. Empress Beatrix is a prime example for a minifigure that should have a cape but doesn't. So I gave her one and the value of the minifigure instantly increased. You can also give your ninjas capes. Your friend's minifigure will then look something like this. And you have one that makes each and every one of your buddies envious. Now, Kamas is also an underrated way to make a minifigure cooler. Just take this master Wu. Without a cape, he's literally a nobody, but with he is definitely worth buying. Another, more complicated way to flex on your friends is to make custom items. You can carve away the top of a hood and add a rye set. And Master Chen can go undercover in an instant. And if you want to raise it to a god level, start painting the entire minifigure. That was absolutely awesome. Go check out Brick Kenobi on YouTube. For the first trick, you're going to need pasta. Using scissors, you cut them in half. Then get a wall piece along with the piece that has studs on the side, stick bars into it, and then you can put the pasta on it and it makes for a pretty cool texture. Since it's a holiday season, you can actually celebrate by building a present. You just take a circular piece, another circular flat, and then a brick with a star at the top. And done, you've got a present. If you have one of these Dragon Ball- Nope, I'm not gonna say it. I saw you guys in the comments of last video. So, instead, I'm gonna be saying Dragon Energy Ball- so, if you have a Dragon Energy Core as well as a Dragon Energy Core holder, you actually have to get this black piece as well as this gray piece. Put the Dragon Energy Core holder with the core of front of that, and pretty much what I'm going to be making is a shooter. So, right here, I just made a base for it, as you can see here, if you want to build it. And then, I added a bunch of plates because this is what you can do with them. You can pretty much press those plates, and you can hit anyone. So, we have the Crystal King here as our test object, and three, two, one. Wow. For trick number four, you can actually use this ladder piece as a fence. So here I've created an Imperium cubicle. Pretty much the Imperium can keep people out. It works great when you add one of those turning pieces. If you want to play Lego Brawls with some real competition, 
We have just created a Discord server. Join link in the description. Come play with us. This bike battle piece is more useful than you think. If you get one of these parts, you can make a shield. In fact, if you get a dome part, it looks like a better shield. And if you add an emblem, it becomes an even better shield. Now, before we keep on going, LEGO has said if we reach 10,000 subscribers, we might be able to review new Ninjago sets. So please help us out and hit the subscribe button below. If you have one of these parts, you can make any character do Spinjitsu. You just have to add a stick to hold at the end and then put a figure on it. To give him Oni powers, I gave him the crystal pieces and I think that definitely did the job. If you have a bunch of loose dragon cores and don't know how to hold them, you can actually make this simple build with the front and a back and then put it together, you can hold them with these. If you think Zane has some cool robotic arms, using a controller and a few robotic arm pieces, you can put them on your minifigure who can now carry anything. With the dragon energy cores, you can build a car. For the back of the build, I put a moving rod, added the cores to the front, and to test this, Zane versus car. I think it's safe to say the core car won. After a hard day of ninja work, Cole needs to eat lunch. So he gets some good sushi but finds out that there's nowhere to sit. To build the table, I use a 1x1 cylinder, a stick with an umbrella, one of those flat shield pieces, and a wheel. Then get food held up by a hold stud, and here's a table that can hold your stuff. However, Naruto sees Cole eating ramen and decides to steal it from him. To get it back, you can build Cole's hammer using these pieces. Nice job, Cole. Now along with Cole's hammer, you can build a gong. You have to start with a plate and a stick, add bicycle pedals, and finish the gong. Let's try it out. If you feel like replacing Lloyd, you can make a simple crystal fern build using these pieces. Can the Imperium have some cooler weapons? Yeah, if you actually take this like part and put it on top of the staff, it makes it look like a lightning rod, and if you have like a master of heat or something, you can make a torch. If you have Coco from the Ninjaga movie, you can use her armor for Zane and it fits perfectly. Since we built Cole a weapon, let's build Jay a weapon. This can be done by adding gray studs to a normal mace. But before we keep on going, Gundam has some awesome stuff to show you guys. What's up bros, Gundam here. So for my first trick, I'm just going to be taking the Oni Lloyd minifigure from Ninjaga Crystallized. We're going to swap out this legacy armor piece for the golden dragon armor piece. We attach face mask and this looks pretty sick. Second trick, as you can see here, instead of using these Digi Ninja head pieces with the visor for your Digi Ninja minifigures, you can instead use the dragon's rising heads and those visor head prints for your Digi Ninja minifigure. Fourth tip, did you know that these purse pieces are great for giving your minifigure Here's the ability to store weapons. You can just slide it into the back of the purse piece. As you can see here, the sword of fire is locked in place. Depending on how big your weapon is, sometimes you can store multiple weapons. For my fifth and last tip or trick, a great alternative to this scuba piece is simply taking one of these scuba pieces. I took this breathing mask piece from an aim agent from Marvel and pop it all onto the rest of the minifigure and bam. Those were some really interesting tricks. Go check him out. If you have a minifigure with two studs in the back, you can actually place a flyer on their back using these A pieces. Let me know in the comments if you know what this is a reference to. Using these ladder pieces, you can actually build a pen for Ryu or fence up a city during construction. Now for the next trick, I actually spent around three hours on this trick because I was trying to gather pieces to put Lego stickers on. And then I made these prints as practice. You can barely see it, but I got the sticker sheet ready. And it came out like this really messed up the ink got very messy and didn't stay on i was defeated then i realized i had a brain i could take the good looking prints and glue them onto the stickers and then stick them on my minifigure like i did here and i can't wait to show you since i spent forever on these i'm going to count each one as a trick first up is lloyd grumbadon i think it works out pretty well torso is a bit off but it's okay nia definitely looks really cool and the colors sort of match lloyd's i think zane came out really good you can't really tell that his torso is fake. Kai's colors came out horrible. It could have been much better. I think Cole did pretty well. I love the RX arms. I put that on there. And they also have back prints, both Lloyd and Cole. The rest of the ninja don't because I couldn't get those. Thank you so much to Skunk Bricks for making these. Next up was Jay and he was definitely one of the worst ones. The prints came out pretty bad. I also finished my Sig Fig in Lego and I think this one came out pretty well. Some of it is a bit faded but still pretty cool. I also did the Master Lloyd minifigure and if you want to know the legs are from Master Ru from Crystallize. I think it came out great. Lastly I made this emblem. These are from the mechs and here's everything together. Maybe if I- Training courses are such a big thing in Ninjago, so let's make one. First, we need a big green plate. 
then Master Lloyd, and our two trainees. For our first obstacle, I decided to get a bunch of these brown stumps, and then I added this sword mechanism which could attack anyone jumping over these stumps, like this. So the ninja have to avoid these moving swords during their jumps. Next up, you have to jump over all of these and make it pass safely without falling. And if you think this is hard, it's only getting harder from here. These LEGO hoop pieces look just like the Ninjago hoops in training courses. And with a stand to hold a hoop, we've got the next part of our training course. But to make it even cooler, I actually made this little clicking thing where you can actually make the hoop go up and down. So if you go ahead and put the hoop right in there, it works well. Even though this already looks really menacing, let's make it worse. You can actually put these fire feather pieces on this bicycle pedal. And now we have a ring on fire. However, our next ring is worse because at the very bottom, you can see this actually spins and it has more fire on it too for the fire on top i used a gray glizzy piece and i think it'd be really cool as a minifigure weapon next up i made an even bigger one of those fire thingies and then i use these handcuff parts to hold up some more fire there's our three hoops of fire but before we keep on going radio dj robot has some cool tricks to show you hi this is radio dj robot and i'm here to show you some cool ninjago ideas for community productions now did you know the bottom part is actually a really good piece for a half mask? You can replace the top with ninja hair and it just looks really nice with all the different colors. It's really for this next one, let's take a look at this minifigure that I debuted last week. Did you know that you can actually put a clear visor piece onto the samurai helmet? It just pops in. So these little rubber fang pieces come in a lot of Ninjago sets and also these rubber shurikens. And because they're flexible, you can actually slot the shuriken into the fang piece. It looks really nice. Here's how you can display your ninja suits. Just take the original suit and replace the head with a different colored one, maybe black or silver. And that makes it look like you're using a mannequin to display your ninja suits on a display. That was absolutely amazing guys. Make sure to go check him out. Next, I got a Lego tube and placed a robot on top of it with fire coming out of the arms. And it's only gonna get worse. I happen to have a ton of these Lego wheel pieces, which we'll be using for our next obstacle. I also got this very long rod, which is so long, it's about as long as a big base plate. And if you put some wheel pieces at the end, it looks like a marshmallow. In fact, I want to toast it a little bit. Oh, not again. That's what you get from misdemeanor. Along with this, I made these platforms using some door frames, and that's it. If you're wondering how this is a challenge, this big wheel turns really quickly. Now, if you somehow get past all that, there's another spinning thing that could break if you jump on it too hard. To finish off this obstacle course, I added two more hoops, one with a spear in it, so you can only go in two ways, half the ways, and one with fire cutting it into thirds, meaning you can only jump through one of those three ways. I got this tea table from the markets for Lloyd to have, and I also made this turning dragon symbol thing. And so here are our new contestants that are going to be testing our new obstacle course. Let's get to it. Starting off with Rapton. Oh no, uh, what is he? What would you expect from Rapton anyway? Next up is Nelson who didn't get too far. And we also have the Bankstone Warrior who is, I don't even know what you don't, don't. Not another one. Wildfire went wild on it. It just didn't exactly end up well. The Crystal King couldn't get past the ring since he was too big and Garmadon decided just to fly over it. Sora got really far, it's just, it didn't end up going all the way. Aaron got much farther, it's just this happened. The first people who were actually able to finish the course were Pixel and Harumi. No wonder. But the Empress wasn't so lucky. The ninja treated the obstacle course as if it was a joke because it was that easy for them, leaving us with these three. I don't exactly know what happened, but the green screen guy somehow did it. Dareth just used his Master of Brown powers and just flew across the course. As for the sushi chef, you have to tell him to deliver the lollipop to Ryu in half a millisecond. Damn, that was fast. If you have these trans infinity stone holders, you can actually put them on shurikens to make it look like Zane spinning them. With these two pieces, you can pretty much create a hoop to put all your weapons in. It's a great way to store a bunch of them. Another trick to store weapons is to put them in the ladder thing that we did earlier. Or if you have bigger skides, you can store it using this method. Lastly, using the wheel pieces from earlier, you can actually hold a ton of katanas. 
So now, in total, we have 100 tricks from me, 3 tricks from JW Xbrix, 3 tricks from Brick Kenobi, 4 tricks from Gundam, and 4 tricks from Radio DJ Robot, coming out to a total of 114 tricks. Thank you guys so much for watching, and bye.